minutes into talk, and then this is how terrible the names of the telescopes are. And it, it goes up. It goes up, right? But you'll notice that it starts in the negatives. That's because I wanted to tell you about my absolute favorite telescope. So I want you guys, this is, you got to guess, okay? And maybe not the astronomers, because you guys are way too smart. But what do you think this is? What telescope is this? And why does it look like there are windows that look like this? It's an aircraft. It's an aircraft. Yeah, this is Sophia. Okay, so we take a telescope, and we stick it in the back of a Boeing 747, and then we observe while flying around the Earth. Okay, why would we do that, though? Like, that, that kind of seems like a lot of work, right? Okay, so Hawaii, Mauna Kea. This is, we're looking at different colors, right? And we're looking at how much light we can see because the atmosphere is a bitch. And for Mauna Kea, it's like, okay, here, we can see, that's us, that's visible, right? And then everything kind of, oh, oh, not so good. We can't really see as much, right? This is Sophia. We go above the atmosphere so that we can see infrared light. So that's beyond red, right? Which is brilliant. I think it's brilliant. What's funny, though, is you have to stick an entire telescope in the back of a, of a, like, of a plane. So they completely changed the design of the telescope. They had to, like, so they, the back of the plane, they basically brought the back of it forward so that the entire back portion could feel the atmosphere and be completely out to, like, to the atmosphere. And not only that, but they had to adjust the edge of the telescope so that air could like freely fly over, so that you didn't get turbulent air. It was brilliant. I'm, I'm so obsessed with this telescope. <laughs> so this, this is, okay, so how would you fly around so that you could keep pointing at a specific object, right? So you have a specific point in the sky that you're trying to look at. And each one of these portions here is where Sophia has oriented itself to fly in the correct direction so that one side of it is pointing at the correct object constantly while the Earth rotates. Can we just like, can we get a round of applause for that? That's insane. <laughs> so insane. And even more, they have to get flight control to agree to these. They literally, they, the way that they tell flight control that this is totally all right is they give it little, like, okay, we're going to be in this little hoop and we're going to jump through this and then we're going to jump through another hoop and another hoop, and they basically have to be like, oh, we promise we're gonna get where we told, but just with approximations, <laughs> with a couple approximations. One of the advantages, though, is that instead of spending up, like sending a uh, spacecraft or some form of, of instrument into space, we can actually adjust our instruments. So it, it comes back down on the Earth. We get to, this is the instrument bay on Sophia right here, and we get to adjust that every single time. It's really, really beautiful. Okay, this is the final portion. I promise this is the last part, but look at this. This right here is constantly moving. So you're sitting in a plane and you're watching a telescope shake with all the turbulence, and it's the one staying still. You're the one moving, right? It's beautiful. And just for a really quick reminder, okay, so here's our light, and it comes down and it slams across our primary mirror, and then it bounces back up, and then it bounces here, and then it goes into our instruments. Does that make sense? How light's working? All right. And if I haven't convinced you that it's amazing, <laughs> if I five, you can actually steal this telescope and fly around. <laughs> the weekend plans with my friends. It's going to be great. Okay. This is the next guess. Any guesses on this one? I'll give you one hint, which is that it has been mentioned tonight. Does anyone remember this one? It's Subaru. It's Subaru. So look, that right there is like little places where people can walk. This thing is ginormous. This is huge. Like, this is huge. <laughs> Do you see this? Okay, so I told you that the names would be getting slightly worse. I figured Subaru was like not amazing, but it turns out that this is a Japanese funded telescope and that in Japanese it means the Pleiades. So it's actually kind of beautiful. So I had to get to like slightly worse named telescopes eventually. We'll get there, I promise, we'll get there. Okay, so this is what the primary mirror looks like. And I want you all to just kind of get prepared for what this is about to happen, okay? So what it should look like, and then one morning when some instruments go wrong, what it does look like the next morning. So at the very top of the telescope, so like way up here, you would see one of the main instruments, and it has to be cool, right? In the same way that a radiator would cool in your car. That same liquid leaked, 
and fell onto the main mirror. And that's what this red stuff is. And not only that, but it fell into the main hole. So the light will actually come from above, bounce, bounce, and then go into the center. There's a hole in the mirror and hit our instruments. That's also where it leaked into. Our instruments were pretty hurt. But what I'm really proud of, of about this is that it only took them a month to completely basically rebuild the telescope, and it was completely fine. The mirror survived. We just get a round of applause. The mirror survived. <laughs> That's wonderful. It's a Subaru, of course it survived. It's a Subaru. <laughs> of course it leaked, then it survived. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any guesses on this one? It's McDonald's. Is this McDonald's Observatory? Um, <laughs> it's named after the, the person who funded it, though, so it's a little bit better. Alright, so this is a 2.7 meter telescope, and I wanted to show you, you know what a mirror should look like, right? This right here is an astronomer's telegram. So this is where, we, it used to actually be real telegrams because astronomers have been around for a while. Um, but this is a telegram where it says, in view of highly exaggerated and incorrect news stories of grave damage to the 2.7 meter, McDonald Observatory Refractor, a prompt summary of the facts may be an incident to, to the astronomical community. So, so look, this is like the, the fake news that was back then, right? <laughs> this, this is what happened to the primary mirror. Any guesses as to what those are? Birds. Not birds. Bullet holes. Bullet holes. That's, that's true. So one of the people who they hired when they were going to this telescope, they actually decided to shoot the main primary mirror. And then they took a hammer and tried to hurt the mirror as well, which just like hurts me. <laughs> Um, what's funny though is that they, they called the cops after this and the cop, not really knowing anything much about what the mirror should look like, saw the hole in the middle and thought that the hole in the middle was the damage from the shots. <laughs> <laughs> but what's amazing is that, uh, so each one of these, they, they took out the bullet holes, they covered them up with black so that basically no reflection would kind of skew around your light when it was moving through the telescope. And you'll see in the bottom of the ATEL that it basically had like a 1% reduction in efficiency, so the thing was totally fine, which is mad. How is that fine? I don't understand. There are five, six bullet holes in their telescope, but it's good. It worked. Okay, so any guesses on this one? Yes, this is the Very Large Telescope. Great name. Yeah. It's actually four telescopes. Unit telescope one, unit telescope two, can you guess the X two? <laughs> unit telescope three, unit telescope four. Um, and you may, I guess you, you won't necessarily recognize this, but you may know what this is. What is this? Bond? James Bond? Yeah, yeah. So when you're at an observatory, you need a place to stay, right? When you're doing many, many, many weeks sometimes of observing. And uh, this is the lair in one of Bond's films. And what's funny is, uh, so this is this is not what it normally looks like. Like astronomers aren't normally this like kind of set up. Can I just say? Like usually it's like okay, you have a bed and you can carry your own food and you have a house and you can like at least a roof and that's that's kind of all you need. Um, but this is a beautiful setup and they actually use it as the evil lair in the films. But what's funny to me is that this these are the telescopes, right? In the film, they hid them. <laughs> like all of the shots, it's like you can't see the top of the hill. <laughs> Which is like a hole. <laughs> That's the fun part. No, it's great though. It's great. Where is that? It's in Chile. Yes, Atacama Desert. Okay, this is my my top prize. This is the one that has the worst name. Any guesses? It's the 100 inch, but it's also called the Hooker Telescope. <laughs> and you might yeah you might laugh a little bit, but. Uh, <laughs> This is one of uh, my favorite telescopes. It's actually extraordinarily formative in terms of what we discover about the universe thanks to it. Um, so I just want to give you a little bit of the journey. So this is the primary mirror. It was made out of green wine glass, like the same stuff that would make like a wine glass. And they tried two times to make it. And you'll notice these bubbles. Those weren't supposed to be there. It happened, but it wasn't supposed to happen. And they tried a third time with a thinner telescope mirror. and that time it, it didn't work. The problem with that is that when you move the telescope, the mirror moves as well, 
and gravity pulls on it and bends it so that it actually doesn't move the light the same way that you'd like it to. So they took the second one that they had a shot with, and they're like, all right, we're going we're gonna to give this a shot. And they spent seven years correcting it so that it was within a millionth of an inch on the surface, which is beautiful. And then it, that wasn't the only journey, though. They were trying to make it up the actual mountain to bring it up to the telescope. There were threats of bombs, so people were going to try and blow it up on the way up. So this poor telescope trying to make it through. But it made some amazing results. So anybody know who this is? This is a hint for the astronomers. Hubble. This is Edwin Hubble. And uh, this is him looking into the Hooker telescope. And a couple things that uh, was figured out from this telescope. So first of all, what I love, I, I just love this. Um, before they knew that galaxies, there were multiple galaxies, they called them island universes. And he proved that the Andromeda galaxy, which is a local island universe, was actually not part of the Milky Way, that it was separate. And this right here, later, like 20 years later, we ended up discovering that not only was our galaxy not the only galaxy, but our entire universe was expanding. So this, this telescope is incredibly important, which, and, it's, and it's the worst named telescope in my opinion. So we've got both, equally important. And I'll just shout this out. So this morning, Gaia, which is one of our space-based uh, telescopes, came out. And it's giving the velocities and the distances to a whole bunch of local, of local stars in the galaxy. And this right here is Andromeda. We're seeing the velocity from Andromeda, the same exact thing, just from this morning, like fresh release. And I'll just, I'll just note that it's very worth being on Twitter, because you get to see things <laughs> like this. So follow astronomers. They're wonderful. <laughs> All right, I just want to say that the future is very bright for astronomy, but it's pretty terrible for names. So we have the extremely large telescope. Oh, yeah, great, great. And the 30-meter telescope. I wonder how big the primary mirror is on that. <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> All right, so just to give you perspective, this right here is Hubble. That's the size of the primary mirror on Hubble. Um, this right here is the 30-meter telescope. And this is the extremely large telescope. So these are these are huge. All right. So I'll just leave it with that. I wanted to give a couple last shout outs. The, uh, the multi-mirror telescope was originally going to be four mirrors. It's one. It's still called <laughs> the multi-mirror telescope. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to the 30 millimeter telescope, because that's actually pretty tiny. They're like these things that look like a, a like a, a soccer ball size, and they're looking for supernova. But they want to get up on the level of the 30 meter telescopes. They're almost there. TMNT. <laughs> um, and speaking of TMT, the Titan Monitoring Telescope has the same acronym. So great choice, great, great, great choice. But as, although we suck at naming things, I gotta say we do some wonderful science. So stick around. All right. Thank you very much. I'll take the questions. It's named, okay, so why is the, the telescope, we're talking about the Hooker telescope, why is it named that? So the primary mirror was actually funded by Hooker before there was funding for the entire telescope. Um, so it's named after him. Poor guy. <laughs> Way back there. Yeah, you, the one turned around. How large is the James Webb telescope? How large is the James Webb telescope? So this right here is James Webb compared to Hubble right there. Yeah. Awesome. Where's VLT? VLT to the right. I see somebody found it, but not me. To the right of Hubble. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's right next to Hubble. Oh, I not see them. Four green circles. Okay, wait. I go to Hubble, and then where do I go? Up right. <laughs> well, to the right. Thank you all. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> go. What would you name a telescope? Oh, gosh. I figured that I'd have to go in the tradition of terrible names. So whatever it is, I don't know what it'll be yet, but it has to be terrible. <laughs> go. Why were they trying to bomb the mirror? So I learned a lot about it, but that was lost to history. Sad to say. It's a shame. 
Go. When will James Webb launch? When will James Webb launch? <laughs> Soon, I hope. It says plan Yeah, it really. 2024? Is that it? 2020. 2020. I really hope it's not 2024. That would break my heart. <laughs> Go. So I, that was also lost to history. Nobody knows why the telescope was shot. Donald was shot. It's just <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? All right. Oh, go. So the question is, can the smaller telescope still be useful given the larger ones? And the answer is yes, definitely. Um, so a lot, I'll, I'll mention really quick, I was talking about the 30-millimeter uh, telescope. This is used for catching really bright transients. So when light suddenly changes, for instance, when a star is blowing up, like with a supernova. Um, and these are really, really important for follow-up observations. We use the entire fleet of telescopes. Just because we have the biggest ones, we're doing unique science that can only be done with those telescopes. And the surrounding ones can be using, used for developing other instruments and all the other science that's still necessary for follow-up. Other questions? Is there anyone? I have a question. Go. Who's James Webb named for? Who's James Webb named for? <laughs> who is James Webb? And then I'm going to go from the corner. <laughs> I don't know. Who is it named for? James Webb? He was a NASA administrator. A NASA administrator? That's awesome. He was in charge of NASA during the Apollo program. That's wonderful. Oh, OK. You learn your stuff every day, hence why we're here. Right. Any questions? Okay, thank you all so much. This is a wonderful. Keep it going for a while. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. Our next student will be I already forgot the date. It's the twenty third, right? Is that right? The twenty third on Wednesday. We're keeping this time slot so that we have darkness, so that you can see the beautiful stars on the screen. So remember to come at eight instead of seven. And I'll see you next month. Thanks for coming out.